Mark, uh, we appreciate the time. Uh, what are you hearing about how this deal came together? Well, you know, I think they've obviously been talking to the Padres, among other teams, for a long time. I've spoken to Manny a couple times over the course of the winter, and, you know, he knew that there was going to be a deal there for him. He had patience. He was not freaking out the way that the rest of us were. Uh, and, you know, I think for him, it was just about finding the right place, the right fit for him and his wife. And as much as anything, you know, a team where he felt he was going to be able to contend. He really likes the, the young core there. Uh, and, and, you know, rather than joining a team of guys who are headed for free agency or anything like that, you know, the right deal came about with the team that he thought he had a chance to, you know, to go to go forward in the future with. That's interesting. You mentioned the young core, a, a, a farm system that is uh, loaded with talent. And, and you mentioned that that was a a very big factor for Machado and his team in this decision. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the fact that last year when they went out and spent the money on Eric Hosmer, that showed that the Padres were planning on being a team that was going to, you know, build for something for the future. It wasn't just a matter of, you know, trying to make one big splash to appease the fan base. Uh, they were looking at long term. Obviously, when you commit $300 million in 10 years to a player, you're talking about something long term. So, uh, you know, I think all those factors had to had to play a part in this decision. I, I wonder. Go ahead, Cliff. Well, Mark, for me, you know, where do they go now as far as the last couple of seasons? You, have, you get two hitters, right? And now you look the staff pitching staff, that is, and you go where if you A.J. Prello? Well, you know, I think they've got some young guys they like coming up through the system. You know, now it's a question of, uh, you know, next year, do they make a big play for a Garrett Cole? Do they make a big play for another, you know, another free agent? Do they go out and sign a pitcher now? I mean, Dallas Keuchel's still out there as well. Uh, maybe this is a two-prong plan. I don't know that, and I'm certainly not speculating that's going to happen. Uh, but clearly, A.J. Preller has designs on being a contender in this NL West uh, this is a huge step in getting there. It's a huge step, really, for the Padres, as much as anything, in putting themselves on the map as a team that's not just going to be satisfied as an also-ran, right? When they did the Hosmer deal last year and everybody said, yeah, but that's not enough. Well, now they've added Manny Machado to this mix. So the, to those two guys, combined with the fact that they do have this great young system, uh, you know, all of a sudden they're a team that you have to look at a little more seriously than you might have uh, yesterday. Hey, Mark, what's the likelihood that they would entertain – uh, entertain trade options for Will Myers? Well, I think anything's open. A.J. Preller has shown that he's he's willing to do anything he thinks is going to make his team better. Uh, so I don't think you could rule that out. I didn't think you could rule that out before, and I certainly don't think you could rule that out now. Uh, you know, I think with, with the Padres right now, you have to say almost anything's on the table at this point uh, because clearly they have a vision of where they want to go, uh, and I'm guessing that Manny Machado wasn't the final piece for them. So, you know, there's probably going to be more coming, maybe not in the immediate future, but certainly down the line here. And we'll get you out of here on this one. What does this mean for Bryce Harper? <laughs> well, it probably means he's going to look for more than $300 million. So <laughs> if it's $300 million and one, uh, that would probably be uh, uh, the first starting point. Uh, you know, right now Machado has the biggest free agent deal in the history of American sports. Obviously, Giancarlo Stanton's extension uh, was for more dollars, albeit over three more years. So, uh, you know, the AAV of $30 million is better than the uh, AAV of Stanton's deal. But, you know, at least now I think this starts, starts to clarify the Harper market a little better. The Padres are obviously out. You wouldn't think they'd be going in on both of those guys. Uh, so this puts a little more of the pressure on the Phillies and the White Sox and, of course, the Nationals to, uh, you know, to get something done and bring Bryce Harper into their club. We actually have some baseball news. So let's get to it. Sterno roll that animation. It's the world-renowned opening act, and it finally happened, Kevin. It's not official, but Manny Machado reportedly has agreed to a 10-year, $300 million deal with the San Diego Padres. That would be the largest free agent contract in North American sports history. Remember, Giancarlo Stanton's $325 million deal was an extension. Now, on yesterday's show, you thought there was a 25% chance he would land in San Diego. I thought there was an 18% chance he'd end up there. Are you shocked? Take a deep breath, Chris. You're all red and stuff. I didn't get a chance to say hello to my fans out there in Dental Talk. Usually the first minute and a half is the best part of the show. The Manny Machado signing. Now we can go. I am shocked. I really am. I, I, I'm shocked that it, the Padres st stepped up for 300 million, period. You, you, we always talk about big market clubs. We always talk about the, you know, the White Sox came into play. We're thinking Jerry Ryan's over for 83 years old. This might be the time they step up. Obviously, we'll get to that later. But I was shocked to see 300 for 10 years in San Diego. Mm -hmm. And I was happy as heck. So if that makes sense, I was shocked like, wow, 
but then amazingly happy because we've talked about wanting to go to the All-Star game there. We've talked about having a, a World Series there because we love everything about San Diego. So guess what? They're a step closer to this thing's happening. A few things here. I've, I've been on Twitter a lot today, in part because I did an interview with a station in San Diego last week, and they asked me, what are the odds that either Harper or Machado ends up there? And I said, I don't see either one of them in their future, in part because I didn't think ownership was going to step up. This is a big boy step up. A year ago, exactly today, they gave Eric Hosmer a $144 million deal, far and away the largest in team history. You're talking about one that's more than double now. Okay, so that is stepping into a different financial stratosphere. So good for them. Also, a lot of people on Twitter have been going, oh, well, he's just chasing the money. He's going to a team that won 66 games. Well, guess what? That's his prerogative. If he wants to go cash right. that check every two weeks, perfect. Go right. for it, bro. Maybe you'll win some games along the way, and that's fine, too. Like, you can't have it both ways. You can't go call guys ring chasers and, you know, blame them for going to join a really good team. And then go get in their face when they sign the richest free agent contract ever. You can't have it both ways, Kev. 100%. We talked about it. We talked about these two guys. They want the big number. And like you said, well-deserved. Go get the big number. It could be the highest bidder. I don't know. This was it. But let's be honest now. San Diego is awesome to live at. And you don't think there's a few conversations with Eric Hosberg going, hey, dog, trust me. This is amazing. I have my four-bedroom condo with a jacuzzi overlooking the Pacific Ocean. The weather's 75 degrees. We play in the West, so the travel is awesomeness. There's a lot of things that go into it other than the 300 million. He was rich if he went to the White Sox. He was going to be rich if he went anywhere else. And here he is and rich with the Padres. But desirable place to live. And San Diego, welcome a star to your city. This is an exciting time if you're a Padre fan in the city of San Diego. Okay, let's talk about the baseball side of things. Does this make sense for the team and for Machado? Well, yeah, it makes sense because to get good, Chris, I don't care how many 21-year-olds or 22-year-olds, 24-year-olds you have. If you're going to finish in last place every year and then you go out and sign here and there and then here and there and then here and there, they try with the James Shields and the Kimbrell scene. It just never kind of worked. But you know what? Start putting in some position players. Start being a threat in that 3-4-5. Meyer step up this year, hit 30 home runs. Maybe Machado makes him. Hosmer, now Machado. Myers, you're like, okay, Renfro, okay. Now there's a threat. You had a veteran, Ian Kinsler. Yeah, he's in the back end of his career. He knows that. But you know what? He's comfortable in who he is. So now you start having a veteran presence along with your 21-year-old Tatis at shortstop, and now you throw in that stuff. This is how you get competitive. Yeah, just at the rotation, I have no idea. Maybe they go out and sign a veteran. Next thing you know, Dallas Keiko might be pitching here. Who knows? But I like this, and this is how you get good. Go get some free agent position players that are impactful in the middle of that lineup. So here's the deal. We know that they've got the great farm system. They've got like, like 10 of the top 100 prospects. This is, this is the biggest piece moving forward, but this is not the end game. Like the Padres of 2019, if they go from 66 wins to 76 or 78, to me, that's a monumental step up. If they can find a bunch of those young pitchers that are in that top 100 and say, we can count on you, that's a good thing. But for A.J. Preller, a lot of people are thinking, well, the, the hard work's done. No, bro, the hard work is just starting for him because if you're going to use the Astros and the Cubs as the blueprint for the Padres, meaning we draft and develop or maybe trade for some young guys right. when we dealt away veterans, like, you know, the Cubs, they brought in Chris Bryant, they traded for Rizzo, they drafted Baez, all those young guys. What solidified their title run in 2016? You know, bringing in a John Lester a couple years before that. That's bringing right. in a John Lackey. I get it, Jason Hayward hasn't lived up to his contract, but he gave a great speech in the 10th inning in the gym in Cleveland to help them win it all. With the Astros, it was the young Bregman, the young Correa, uh, developing Keuchel there. But what was the finished product? Trading for Verlander, bringing in Beltron, bringing in Brian McCann. Those are the moves that are going to take the Padres from an also-ran to an elite level. And I don't know what those moves are going to be. You're going to have to trade away some of these top 10 prospects, so you're not going to hug them and hug on to them and kiss them and act them. Some of those guys are going to be gone. If you want to get to the next step, you're going to have to trade some of them. That's my opinion. No doubt. No doubt. And guess what this does, Chris? Now a free agent, now a guy that's thinking about... Machado brings some presence now to this lineup. Hosmer did also, but maybe that's the reason why Machado got like, okay, besides the $300 million, but you know what? You got some presence in on the team and on the club, and they're not so far away for the next guy. You're like, huh, 
and we don't know what the wins are. I really don't either. You know, you're right. If they get up 12 to 13 wins, you're like, okay, good year. People are going to ask, well, what, where are they going to finish now? They're not better than the Dodgers. They're not better than the Rockies. Maybe they're tick better than Arizona. We don't know what Arizona's going to do. Who knows? They lost Gold Spit and they lost a boy AJ to, to the Dodgers. So who knows? Maybe they're better than the Giants and they finish above fourth place or third place. That's not the issue. The issue is getting better for the goal to get to the postseason and win it. Let's get to Machado as well. Our latest update on him from Heyman. Uh, expected to take the highest offer he gets regardless of location. No shocker there. But just trying to X out, say, uh, some East Coast bias or if he really wants to be with the Yankees. But Ronnie gets an offer that's $30 million more from somewhere else like San Diego. I'm taking San Diego seriously because they meet with him a second time. A.J. Preller flies to Miami. I'm not even having that meeting if I'm a chat on getting close to spring training for a second time if the money's not serious. Um, I, I agree with you there, although I think it's always important to meet with whomever because it's important to be able to use that against other teams. Uh, that being said, this time last year, we thought for sure that Eric Hosmer was going to go to the Boston Red Sox because it was going to be a good fit for him and that left field wall, uh, the glove, all of those things. I ended, ended up signing Mitch Moreland, who had a really fantastic year for the Red Sox. So I don't, I don't, I'm like you. I don't hold the Padres out because they got the job done late last year. They have a huge hole at third base, and he's. this is a team that might not be a playoff contender this year, D.A., but long-term they are, and so it makes sense to sign a 26-year-old. It really does, and the fact that they spent money on Hosmer last year kind of suggested a bit of a, a sea change in San Diego, but then also this farm system is so good. It is so deep. There are so many prospects. If you bring in Machado now and you get him for an 8- to 10-year deal, I don't know if they want to go all the way to 10, but let's say it's 8. Let's assume a lot of those kids are up in the next two to three years and they can contend to the next four to five, maybe before then, that it really makes a lot of sense. Look, it's a, it's a big dent in your wallet, no doubt. And Manny Machado comes with his own types of baggage. But if the Padres are serious about maybe grabbing a market that lost its football team and they can be tier A, B, and C in terms of what people talk about and want to go out and see, this is a real significant upgrade, even with the bag. Yeah, this, this falls in that fine line for me between re risk and recklessness. Because are they, is this the year for them to go all in? You talk about all these young players coming through, but we all know being in the game, a lot of those guys aren't going to turn out to be exactly what we'd hope to be. So they could go off the bridge with this opportunity. This opportunity is not going to come cheap. So they're not necessarily going to spend a dollar on this one and get a dollar fifty worth of value. They're going to have to hope that the dollar that they spend, he's going to equal that kind of value. The bigger issue for me, too, is, is Machado. If you're sitting here and you're Machado and you're his representative, Danny Lozano, Lozano and, he get, and Harper gets what you talked about, I mean, that's going to be really hard on Machado because I'm sure that Manny is sitting there going, I'm the same kind of player. In fact, I feel like I'm a better player than him. Why am I not getting that same exact offer or even beating that? So from the Padres' standpoint, it could be an unbelievable signing or it could be a decision that they're digging themselves out of for years to come. And then just from a representation standpoint, this is a difficult one because these are the two premier players on the market, and I'm sure both of them feel they should be a tick above the other one, not a significant gap. For the Padres, though, there might not be a Machado available to them, say, next offseason, the offseason after. So he is someone that's supposed to be good age-wise yeah. for the next four or five years at least, no? Yeah, Scotty, I know that argument, but I always feel like they're going to be good players that come on the market. There always are good players coming on the market. What you really want to make sure of is that you have an internal core of players to surround those good players on. So I'll ask you guys, as we sit here today, mm. who are the Padres' core players? Well, they're coming. A lot of them are coming. First I of said, all, who seven are of their the core players uh, yeah. Hosmer, sitting here today? Hosmer, Will Myers. Uh, um, is what Myers really a core player right now? You right don't now, know? right now, he no. Is. The core players are going to be uh, Luis Arias, going to Fernando be. Tatis right now. See, Jr. To me, what works in these scenarios is after you've already built a core of players, like the Cubs core. They added Lester to what they already had as a core. When you make free agent players your core. That has a tendency to go in a lot of different directions. Mm. That's why I say there's always risk in every 
decision you make in the game. Nothing comes without risk. You just don't want to go to that recklessness part of it because if it doesn't work, it can set a market like that back for years to come. So just quick, you are more in line with them, say, going for a big free agent in a, another year or two when we see where their position players or are Or taking the aggregate of the money you were going to spend yeah. and you spend that money aggregate on your roster needs because you really have to make sure some of those internal core players are going to be developed into Bryce Harper or Manny Machado or close to that, that they are impact players. Mm -hmm. When I look at that team now, I see potential, but there's a big gap between actual performance from the potential of a player to the actual performance of that player. Yeah, still work to be done for the San Diego Padres.